Hello, John Phillips with Mansfield University here. And in this video, I would like to walk you through how to set up a Ubuntu server on the Amazon AWS cloud. So uh, I'm logged into my um, Amazon control panel. I'm going to click on instances and I can now click launch instance to create a new server. So you have a variety of servers to choose from. Uh, and if you don't see what you want here, you can go to the AWS Marketplace or Community AMIs and search for uh, the specific server you're looking for. Okay, but I'm just going to go with, uh, let's see, the quick start menu and go with this Ubuntu Server 16.04 LTS, long-term support. 16.04, it was, it was uh, released in 2016 in the month of April. All right, and we'll go ahead and hit select. And this, if you're not going to add a GUI to it, uh, it'll work fine as a T2 micro instance. And so I'm going to click uh, configure instance details. All of this you can pretty much leave as is. If you think you're going to keep the server around for a while, you ought to check protect against accidental termination. And then we'll add storage next. And uh, eight gigabytes is probably fine for what we're going to do. That's the minimum size. If you plan on adding a lot to it or supporting a lot of users, you might increase this a bit. But I'll just leave it set there. Next, add tags. I'll put in a name tag. Uh, and Oops, I guess I actually had to click on that. And the value, I usually give it today's date. And then this will be a uh, Ubuntu LAMP server. LAMP is Linux, Apache, a web server, MySQL, and PHP, Perl, Python, whatever you want your P uh, of LAMP to stand for there, or all of the above in our case. Security group. Now, if you already have a security group, you can select an existing one. I'll go ahead and do a brand new security group. All right, and I will put this in both places here. Now, it has a warning about SSH being open to the world. So you really don't want to have your servers so that people could log in from anywhere unless you go ahead and set up an additional firewall uh, software like deny host, that kind of thing. Um, so I'm just going to limit this to allow uh, logging in from my IP address. So yours, of course, would be something different. And we could add another rule, say you want to log in also from the Mansfield University campus or some other site, uh, or maybe from your Windows dev server, things like that. You can add additional IP addresses. So I'm going to do a custom one. This one will be for the Mansfield University campus. And all the IP addresses there start with 157.62. I'll choose the slash 16 option. And so with this, you would be able to log in from anywhere on the MU campus. Now, if your home uh, router modem reboots, your IP often changes. And so you would need to come back here and uh, to your control panel and edit the security setting to change to your latest IP address. All right. Um, let's see. Is there anything else? So it's just giving me a, a look at... Uh, what I have so far. I'll go ahead and hit launch. And now it wants me to, to either choose an existing key, since I have several, or create a new key. And I'm going to assume that maybe you don't have a key yet. So I'll create a new key pair. And you need this in order to log in at least the first time into your new server. So we'll do create a new key pair. I'll name it the date and I'll say Ubuntu key. Now you have to download this and pay attention to where you put it 
and I'm going to put it, um, I have an AWS folder in Dropbox, I will put it right there. Okay, and then now after you have that safely put somewhere where you can find it, do launch instances. And then view instances. Okay, so this is going to take a couple minutes to start up. While it's doing that, um, you need to um, download PuTTY if you don't have it already, if you're on a Windows machine. And if you're on a uh, OS 10 machine, an Apple machine, uh, then you'll just need to get into your terminal and use SSH, um, the secure shell protocol uh, program that you have. Now, I'm just going to show how to do it using PuTTY. Um, if, you, uh, if you're on a, a different type of computer, you'll need to uh, just Google for directions on how to use SSH on your machine. So I've already downloaded PuTTY, so you can do that. Um, download it here. It takes us to this site, and then you can download the MSI Windows installer, 32- uh, or 64-bit, whichever you prefer. All right, and then run that. And then um, you should have PuTTY installed on your computer. So let me go find PuTTY. Let's see. Here it is, the folder for it. And it installs several programs. Now, the main one you use is this P-U-T-T-Y, this PuTTY program. Um, the one that you need, though, for working with your key the very first time, you only have to do this once, is putty gen. So I'm going to run putty gen, the putty key generator. Okay, and then so to, to work with this, I need to load in that key I just downloaded. And let me see if I can find where that went to. It's over in my Dropbox. No, here it is. AWS folder. Um, now you need now we're not seeing the file I just downloaded. You need to come and click this box on the side and say all files and then there we see we have a um, 2017-09-11 ubuntu key.pem that's what I want so that's the one I just downloaded I'm gonna open that it says it imported it so I'll say okay now you can add a key passphrase for extra security um, but I don't want that um, and, uh, and so I don't want to actually make any changes to this. I just want to take what it's given me here. And I'm going to now save the private key. So are you sure you want to save this key without a passphrase? Yes. And then pick a spot to put it. And something to name it. Okay, and then save. All right, and then you can close this. And so now, um, hopefully, we have that saved in a form we can use it. All right, now I want to log into my server. You do that using the PuTTY program. So you can go back to your menu, find PuTTY. I already have it here as a shortcut. And um, we'll need to set several different settings here. So let me just run through them real quick. I usually like to have a lot of scroll back. So I'm going to add a couple zeros there. Uh, for appearance, I'm going to make the font bigger so you can see what I'm doing. Maybe I'll make it 18. Uh, usually I also change the font to console os, but just whatever you'd like. You can change that if you want. Uh, colors, if you want a white background under colors, use system colors. Check that box. If you prefer a black background, leave it unchecked. Connection, I usually set the uh, seconds between keep alive to 60. And then under SSH, click the little plus and click off. And here is where you put your private key file we just created. So browse for that. And then hopefully you can find it. Now notice it ends in .ppk now. That's the one we want. Um, and it should say on the side, putty private key file. Okay, so I'll open that up. And then go back up to the very top of session. And you want to save this. So I'll give it the date again. Um, uh, two. Okay, and I'll save that. 
And then the one other thing I need is the IP address. So I need to go to my control panel. My server is now running. I need to come grab the public IP address. Control C to copy and go back to putty and paste it in for the host name. Save it one more time. And now it'll remember all these settings. And so I won't have to do all this again. And we'll just click open. It gives us warning and that's fine. We'll say yes, log in as, type Ubuntu, uh, Ubuntu, like that. Okay, I'll hit enter, and I'm logged in on my server that's running. Now the server doesn't have much installed as, as far as the web server software, programming languages, has a little bit. Uh, and so what we're going to do next is... Um, in, install some of this software that could be useful to us as we work with our server. Um, but for now, I'm going to end this video. Uh, just let me show you how you get out of this. Uh, you just type log out. This will log you off the server. Now, on your control panel, the server is still running. And so you want to make sure it is a micro instance. And if you have a free account, it's probably not going to charge you anything unless you have something else running. Uh, but it's not a bad idea, you know, if you, if you don't want to take the chance of uh, using your credits or um, you could go instant state and stop. And that'll still keep your uh, server around. When you don't want it anymore, you need to go and if you enabled it, change the termination protection to turn that off. And then you could go instant state terminate and that will delete your server and any storage space that it's using. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh, stop the video right here and then we're going to come back and install some software on the server in the next video thanks for watching